Good evening, my name is Garrett, and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight's final drink is Slaughterhouse American Whiskey. I mean, you can't get more on the nose than that. Look at that. That is, <laughs> that's American. So the, the funny thing behind this one, it's actually showing up on a few people's radars recently. Now this is nine year old whiskey that's then aged in French oak that originally held uh, red wine Bordeaux. And it's an interesting concept. Uh, French oak can add some, you know, some kind of different spice notes to it. And then obviously the red wine is gonna add some fruit notes to it. And then again, you have this nine year old, not a slouch whiskey. And coming in at a 44%, and looking at the bottle, the bottle's simplistic, uh, but it's got the, the meat cleaver on the front here, Slaughterhouse. And it really kind of makes a name for itself just because of this bottling. Uh, coming out of Napa Valley in California, I'm expecting to see some interesting things coming out of this place. Now, as always, we're going to be doing this two different ways. First way being neat, no water, no ice. And then we'll come back through, add a few drops of water in, see what changes up. I just love the color. This color just screams uh, red wine finished. It is just a gorgeous, deep color. It's beautiful. I love the color on this. Let's go for some notes. So right off the bat, it almost has a sherry note to it because of it being uh, your finished in red wine. But it's definitely not like a mixed fruit, dried fruit, or uh, like rich like the Rabbit Hole Derringer, which I'll link up above if you are interested in something finished in sherry. But you do get a bit of that, the, that dryness on the nose. Butterscotch. Yeah, some butterscotch in there, some baking spices. Oh, and those, I, I've noticed from French oak, uh, a lot of different spices come out of that, some different wood notes. So those American notes also show up, that oak, cherry, vanilla, but then they're followed up by that lovely red wine finish in that, that oak, the, uh, the French oak again. Oh. It gives you that bit of classic with a twist. Let's go for taste. Mm. Very dry finish. Like it, it invokes your whole mouth. The, the mouth feel on this one. It's like a, a red wine, very dry oh, fruit notes. You get a bit of fruitiness on there. Mm. That baking spice shows up on the taste. Mm. A bit of caramel. Caramel, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of caramel in that. The mouthfeel on this is very unique because of that, that oak and that French oak and the, the wine finish on there. It, it is super different than a lot of other Americanized whiskeys. Mm. It is like sipping a, a, a different kind of red wine. It's just this, it's not super sweet. It's very, very in depth. Like it's got some heavy heft to it uh, when it comes to those flavors. Oak shows up a little bit, that vanilla shows up a little bit, but that red wine and that oak finish, oh my gosh. Yeah, it, this is this is a beautiful, like if you could pour, if, you, if you're a wine lover or know somebody, uh, in my opinion, uh, this would be a good introduction to what uh, wine finished whiskey can be. Um, I'm, I'm very curious on where they're sourcing this from because I feel like they did a really good job. I'm very curious where the uh, the Bordeaux red wine came from because they're doing a good job. Oh, it's got a good after effect. It's got almost, now that it's been here for a moment, it's kind of dry still, but you're left with this, this beautiful fruity note. 
and it's just simplistic on that and, and that's not a bad kind of simplistic by all means mm. one more one more the alcohol does show up a little bit uh, so do be prepared for that if you are a wine person that's looking for it the alcohol note shows up a bit Mm. But that baking spice is like right up there. Beautiful mouthfeel. Awesome. Love it. Mm. Go for a little bit of water in there. See what mixes up and changes. There we go. Left it set on the side over there. Just a few drops in there. See what changes. Go. Oh. That mouthfeel is so beautiful. It's just so nice. And it just got this after dinner, or with dinner, I guess, would be more or less. Not after dinner, this would be with dinner. Kind of mouthfeel to it. Becomes a little more classic bourbon on there, a little more classic whiskey. The sweetness shows up a little bit more on the watered version. Bit more caramel and butterscotch. Very light on the oak. You can tell again still that this is red wine finished. It's got that little bit of red wine note in there. A little bit of grape note, I guess I should call it more or less. Oh. It shows up a little stronger on here that it's that it's red wine. The baking spice shows up just a little bit. But you, you still get the classic notes of bourbon, you know, of that wood and vanilla. The vanilla shows up pretty good. Let's go for taste. That oak comes out to play. Oh, that baking, sp that French oak is a very interesting thing here because that, in my opinion, that French oak is just punching through what was aged on um, the American side. It's it's got this beautiful spice note to it, that that it's actually a little less dry with that water on there too. It's got a beautiful mouthfeel still, very nice finish. The spice shows up. That vanilla is vanilla caramel are playing around so well. The ABV, the alcohol note. Shows about the same. It's there, but it's not offensive. Definitely a lot sweeter with that little tinge of water in there. Yeah, just a little bit sweeter. Mm. But it's still got some beautiful notes going on here. Again, if you're a wine lover or you have a significant other that is, or somebody that's interested, that, you know, they drink wine, but they're kind of interested in, in what whiskey can be. Mm, that, that how it finishes up is, should give them a, a similar feeling to what red wine can do. Now, as we all know, market price is market price, and that varies depending on where you're at. I can find this between 35 and $37 around me. Uh, sometimes I've seen it spike as high as 40. Really haven't seen it go much lower than the uh, you know, 34 ish. Uh, sometimes 35, but yeah, right around no more than $40. So I'd say between 30 and $40 would be a safe bet. It's definitely a good buy. This is going to give people kind of that good bridge between. If you're a wine lover that's starting to get into whiskeys, this is a good option if you're a whiskey drinker that's looking for something a little unique or looking to start getting into red wines. I can see where this might give you that same concept, especially in the mouthfeel. That mouthfeel is where this is going to really kind of give you that idea. 
I just don't think it's going to be a good introduction to red wine in general, but I think it's going to give you an idea of what red wine can do for you. But it's nice classic flavors with that bit of twist on there, and it's just a lovely sipping option for people. Oh, it's so good. So I would, they actually do a couple other options out of uh, the same distillery. Splinter Group. SplinterGroupSpirits.com. So they are doing things interesting and I'm going to keep an eye on them because they actually do a, one or two other bottlings. And if it's anything like this, it's worth at least investigating. So yeah, there you go. Slaughterhouse American Whiskey. If you have any questions about it, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. If you have any recommendations over spirits you'd like to see me review, definitely leave them down below as well. And as always, may your last drink of the night be the best one.